so my name's Aaron Erickson, and um, I'm an internal arts teacher. I've been practicing for about 24 years, uh, full-time practice, body, mind, spiritual disciplines teacher, um, and um, healing arts practitioner. So I've had a healing arts practice. I'm an advanced therapeutic uh, body worker. I do neuromuscular and postural balancing. Um, I've been teaching um, yoga, qigong, meditation, breath work. Uh, we say like uh, consciousness teachings. So non-duality, understanding science of self, science of mind. And um, I do all kinds of courses, certification level courses for all of these disciplines. <clears throat> and I'm based out of South Florida. We'll jump right in. Um, my uh, intention is to, you know, go into uh, more teaching, science of self. There's a, a huge topic that was sort of left out of our education, at left out of the mainstream curriculum uh, across the board, whether it's in schools, colleges, or whether it's in churches, whether it's in, uh, you know, the, what our parents were able to, our parents were able to impart to us. And this is... Um, you know, something that I've uh, found in my life that I'm very passionate about, something that um, I love, and it really is, it's studying consciousness itself, the subjective nature of our being. We have the objective reality, which is around us, the manifest world, the universe at large, um, our physical body, our energy, our mind are all part of nature, and this is the natural universe. This is all objective reality. The subjective is the witnessing, uh, the awareness, the, the witness, the seer, the one who we refer to as I. And so that part of ourself is, has some beautiful depth, and <clears throat> there's a whole identity, and there are principles of consciousness that we can examine and, and realize within ourself that are part of the unchanging. And so most of the phenomenal world around us is transient and it continues to change. Everything is coming and going. Uh, it's based on all of the duality, which are pairs of opposites, like Einstein's theory of relativity. And so <clears throat> for pleasure, there's pain, for hot, there's cold, for light, there's dark, for tall, there's short, for heavy, there's light. And we have all of these beautiful pairs of opposites. Um, there is a science called non-duality, and some of you probably are familiar with that, have studied it, but we'll dive into what that is and how um, that relates to us and how it pertains to our consciousness. Um, <clears throat> also, we want to talk about energy. We're going to dive into energetics, uh, looking at ourselves as I mean, not just a physical being, but an energy being, how energy you know, the quality and um, potency of our energy is affecting our life and how we can build the energy stronger to create more coherence within the body, mind, and spirit, uh, boosting our immune system, boosting our brain function, learning to break the patterns and habits of stress because everybody, you know, 95% of the world is walking around in, in some level of stress state and we can really unwind and unbind ourselves from these contractions. And most of it is self-induced because we're, because we're not taught about these principles. So we're going to dive into this stuff. This is a big topic, and I've got to mash a whole bunch of stuff in here and fill your cup. you know. And I want to save time also for doing some breath work together. So we're going to breathe. I want to introduce you guys, uh, girls to, and gentlemen to um, several breathing techniques, which are you know, really, really empowering. And I'll explain... Um, the effects of each one and when to use it, why, why you would want to do that. All right. <clears throat> so let me see my notes here, see if I forgot anything. Okay, and I'm also going to tie this into, you know, really how this, um, how you are the heart of your business and by, you know, taking care of yourself at that next level, you know, even going beyond what is considered mainstream healthy. We can go into like an even higher level of really understanding what is healthy in, in spirit and consciousness and how um, that magnetism that you'll create through building energy, through understanding uh, principles of consciousness, how that will affect um, you as a being and then you driving your business, how that will magnetize and drive prosperity and all those kind of things. So, <clears throat> 
All right, so if you wouldn't mind, we'll just kind of close our eyes for a moment and take a few centering breaths. We're going to breathe in through the nose and down into your belly. The belly or diaphragm uh, gets tight when we're stressed out. And so when you learn to breathe down deeper into your body and penetrate the diaphragm, which basically just below your heart, you know, at your solar plexus, that muscle divides the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. And it's really meant to move up and down freely with your breath. When we get stressed out, that muscle tightens up like a knot. And then we recruit secondary muscles in the neck and the upper back. Uh, these are called serratus, uh, posterior, and scalenes. And what they do is they start lifting the rib cage. And this type of uh, shallow breathing is common. Most adults, like 90% of adults, are doing this more upper chest breath. And as soon as you can breathe back down into your diaphragm and belly, it grounds you. You feel the nervous system start to calm down. Your, your energy becomes more present, your mind more receptive. This is the way all of us are born breathing. So we, this is the natural breath. So with, um, and just for the next like two minutes, we're going to just take these very deep, slow breaths. So try to breathe through your nose. If the nose is stuffy, that's okay. It'll start to open up as we go. Maybe you breathe through your mouth if you have to. But try to breathe in and out through your nose as much as you can. Now as we inhale, feel the belly and diaphragm soften. The belly expands on the inhale. On the exhale, feel the belly and pelvic floor draw up and in. We really want to wring the exhale out. Sometimes we squeeze only a little. We want to squeeze the breath all the way out, wringing it out, emptying it out. This will create a much stronger uh, connection to your breath and body. <clears throat> and so continuing, inhale, slow, deep, full breath. Exhale completely. Inhale, filling. Exhale, emptying. Continue, inhale, expanding. Keep slowing down, fill all the way up. When you feel your body's full, notice that you could fit a little more. It takes a little more effort, but you can stretch the diaphragm, you can stretch the lungs, you can stretch the rib cage and then squeeze and empty. Now as you're emptying, feel that you can really squeeze your exhale. Empty, let the chest sink, the belly draw in, the pelvic floor draw up, and feel how your core gets tight as you exhale and empty. Inhale, filling. Exhale, empty. As we breathe deep, full breaths, we feel ourselves starting to soften, letting go of any tension, mind and body. Feel the heart opening. <clears throat> As we breathe and the mind drops away, creating a little more space, the heart opens a little bit further. And we tune to our higher self. We attune to the love. We attune to the sacredness within. And we're just creating this reverential pause so that we can unify the field and we can start out together in harmony. And so just enjoying a few more deep breaths, drawing the breath in, relaxing, exhale, squeezing to stimulate the nervous system, empty the lungs and move the lymph and blood.
each breath expanding a little bit further, a little bigger, fuller breath. Your body is kind of like elastic and it can stretch or it can contract. <clears throat> As we stretch with each of these conscious connected breaths, we're creating more space, more opening, more relaxation, more vitality. And so we work our lungs, we work our diaphragm open, just like if we were stretching a muscle like a hamstring. We know at first if we were to do a stretch, the muscles are tight, but as we breathe and we stretch, our body opens up, it releases. And this is a beautiful way to undo stress and tension from the nervous system and to create a more expansive, more receptive state. It's a wonderful uh, way to breathe with your loved ones to create more intimacy. Two more big full breaths. All right, just resume the natural uh, breathing and go ahead to swallow down if you need to, to clear the throat. Release any pressure buildup from the, the head. Sometimes if you're doing uh, breath work, you start to feel pressure in your head. And the simplest way is to just tuck your chin slightly and swallow several times, and that releases the pressure. It might come in handy, even if not today, if you're doing a meditation, breath work, yoga, or qigong, uh, just to know how to move some of that um, energy that rises up uh, to move it back down in the system. Okay, and then we just honor each other. We can take the hands to heart center. And I'm just recognizing that the same light in me is the same light in each one of you, that there is one flowing through all things. And we bow to that one and we honor each other. Namaste. Oh, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> and so that was just a few minutes of breathing, but it's amazing how good it feels, right? and just takes a, uh, and opens us up a little bit further. Okay, so <clears throat> that was called diaphragmatic breathing or deep belly breathing. Um, and it really, ultimately, you would breathe like that every day, all day long. Um, as an infant, if you ever watch a baby, if you have a baby or somebody close to you has some, a baby that's under like one years old, if you watch them breathe, it's always deep breaths into the belly. The belly expands and contracts. And then if you ask most adults, hey, I wanna just see you take a deep breath. You'll, and you'll watch all of the, <laughs> all the energy goes up here into the chest. And so if we can soften that down and breathe, breathe into our belly, it grounds you so much. And if there was one takeaway from this whole time that we're gonna to spend together, if you would just become more conscious of deep belly breathing throughout your day, that would increase your vitality, boost your immune system, boost your metabolism, you would sleep better, and you would have more libido, you would have more energy to do all the things that you love to do in your life. That is one of the Taoist secrets of longevity and immortality. And so just learning to breathe deep, full breaths, exercising your diaphragm and pelvic floor with the breath uh, stimulates the, the healthiest response in your body. We could call that the breath of wellness. <clears throat> okay, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, the educational system and, um, you know, uh, I know that most of your coaches, so I'm, I'm going to share this, I know you probably uh, already share some of these things, but I know every time we gather around this information, uh, good comes from it. And if anything else, we just re-energize each other, re-inspire each other to keep sharing this stuff with the world. <clears throat> so. Science of self, um, we could say, is esoteric wisdom. Now, most of what we learn in school, we have all of these subjects, English, math, uh, science, biology, geography, history, 
Um, you know, we're learning many beautiful things, but these are considered the science of the outer world, which is exoteric. So exoteric is the science and study of the world around us. Esoteric is the study and science of the world within us. So probably the closest we get in traditional school would be psychology, which is very fascinating to learn how the mind works. Uh, but esoteric takes it even deeper. Um, so, for example, um, some of esoteric subject matter will cover things like learning as a youngster how to stand in relation with gravity. Gravity is a force that constantly flows through the body. Um, and learning how to stack your bones in alignment with gravity creates structural integrity. So you're less likely for injury. Over time, your body will last longer, age in a healthier way. Anytime that our posture gets distorted and comes out of alignment with gravity, not only does it create physical negatives, but also begins to disrupt the flow of energy in the meridians. Uh, most of you are uh, familiar with meridians. Meridians, like in Chinese medicine, are the uh, lines of energy that flow through your body. They call them fascial meridians because most of it flows through the connective tissue, like the fascia in the body. But they basically are like chimneys or, you know, kind of for your organs. So like for your heart, your heart has a channel that flows from your heart out through your arm to the palms of your hand. Now, <clears throat> When your heart has so much heat, it needs to vent the heat out. So the heat goes out. If the heat builds up in the heart, then you get hardening of the heart, hardening of the arteries. It leads to heart attack. It leads to other types of issues. So when the heart stays cool, it functions much better. Um, so you have this ventilation system. So the heat can go out, but also nourishment comes in. So the whole universe around us is a universal life support matrix. Now, of course, we think of the Matrix, the movie right away, because that's like, the, you know, a beautiful thing that we all have seen. And of course, there was a lot of principles and, and things portrayed in there, but it's also a lot of sci-fi. <clears throat> but this universal life support matrix, um, literally, there are lines of energy that flow through everything in the universe. Uh, we're able to take pictures of it with Calurian photography and things like that. So... Aside, our physical body has a personal atmosphere we call our aura. The aura is a field of energy that is emanating out from our body. So our DNA stores photons of light. When we're stressed, uh, the body gets a little bit of a contractive squeeze, like you're squeezing a sponge, and light leaves the field. When you're relaxed, more light can enter into the field, and that way light builds up. And this light body or light energy is the vitality that flows through you. So we call the signal flow path of consciousness. Consciousness itself is flowing just like gravity is flowing and it carries information. We call the organizing intelligence. So the organizing intelligence flows through everything. That's how the trillions of cells in your body know what to do. It's not just chemical uh, correspondences, you know, like a chemical hormone goes out from my heart to my brain, tells it one thing and then sends another chemical back, uh, but it's actually energetic signals that are flowing through. So <clears throat> your body has a physical energy field and there's a whole anatomy uh, that goes along with it. Just like your physical body has an anatomy, we know that we have bones, we have muscles, we have a heart, we have lungs, liver, we have all these organs and glands and we learn what they do. And that's anatomy and physiology. But we're going to go into some of the um, subtle anatomy and physiology and learning about like chakras, learning about energy channels and lines. So the universe being a life support matrix, like if we were to take one of the elements, like the earth, we take the earth away, Everything around us came from the earth. Not only that our physical body is made of all the nutrition that we broke down through first our mother's milk, actually for our mother's blood coming through our umbilical cord. Then when we were born, we drank her milk. Then we started to eat food. Now everything was a seed that grew in the earth's soil. Uh, and then either something ate it and you ate that animal or fish, or you ate the plant, the, the broccoli, the rice, the orange, whatever it was directly from the earth. And it was reorganized uh, by the intelligence within you to create fingernails, hair, bones, muscles. So your whole body is made of the earth. It's reorganization of the food that you've eaten has become a form, a life form. This life form runs on energy. And so we're going to talk about um, the energy. So 
the reorganization, uh, like in the other things in the room around you, even like our computers and iPhones, the metals, the plastics, the glass, everything uh, around you was made from the earth. The wood all came from the earth. So we take away the earth out of the uh, structure and most everything is going away, right? If we take away water, that one element, uh, life goes away. We take away fire or the sun, that goes away. We take away the air, the atmosphere, it goes away. Um, now, we're talking mostly the physical reality around us, but the energetic components of each of these are also important. So, <clears throat> if we look at, I don't know if any of you have seen Alex Gray's visionary art, uh, but he does really cool illustrations, you could Google it, but he draws like the, uh, the meridian system and the subtle body, like the aura, and so you can see like the chakras, a really cool image to just have a, like a visual of what this might look like on a subtle level. But um, all, in our spine, we have seven major nerve plexuses. And these nerve plexuses are nourished by seven chakras. So a chakra is like a vortex or a, a point of energy within the body that uh, distributes the energy to particular areas. So we have seven major nerve plexuses, seven major chakras, and those are within the spine. Now the spine nourishes all of the organs, glands, muscles, bones, and everything. So <clears throat> um, within you, in yoga, they say there's 72,000 subtle energy channels. Now they're thin like a, like a ray of light, like thin as a, 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 string, a stream of hair, a string of hair, a strand of hair, excuse me. And so imagine you had like a holographic matrix um, with all of these thin filaments of light and it basically is creating an energetic duplicate of your physical form. And within the energetic duplicate, uh, in the centers where the spine would be are the chakras. And so these seven chakras correspond with you on different levels. So your root chakra is your physical body. Your sacral chakra is your, the emotional body, which is all, but also is connected to your breath, your nervous system, um, your emotions, and things like that. Now we have the third chakra, which is the solar plexus. This one's correspondent with our intellect and it's the fire element in the body. The heart chakra is uh, connected with the, the wind element, but it's also, it's the, the seat of our conscience. So the seat of our conscience, <clears throat> the throat chakra, the element is ether or space. Space is a, uh, and I'll touch back on this, but space, we, we think of it as empty but it's actually a field of plasma. So uh, ether or plasma is this field of energetic potential. It's like the quantum field, we could say if we were using scientific terms, the ethers. <clears throat> and so throat chakra. And this is correspondent with your intuition. So your intuition, and we can learn to listen to our intuition. It's um, subtle, it's more of a feeling awareness than a thought awareness. So when your mind gets quiet, your intuition gets stronger. You're able to feel into what feels right or what feels true. And so there's a subtle, uh, and it becomes stronger as you develop it, but we can learn through quieting the mind to strengthen intuition. And intuition in yoga is called higher mind because um, instead of using our regular five senses, we're using our sixth sense, which can source from the infinite intelligence, which is being broadcast through the whole universe. So it's called the signal flow path of consciousness. Okay, so moving in, into the upper element, so now we have the, th the third eye. The element is light. So light is the light of consciousness. It's the infinite intelligence. It's also called divine mind. And, um, and then we have the crown chakra, which is uh, our connection to the absolute which we could say is everywhere present and yet, uh, and nowhere absent, but yet unmanifest. So the absolute is witnessing, is everywhere, you know, all seeing, all knowing, and yet is not materialized, but is the pure and absolute awareness that um, is individuated as each one of us. 
And so now we, we can take a kind of a journey. So this is a lot of information. I'm going to just <laughs> barrage you guys with stuff. So, you know, you don't have to memorize everything. But by the end, I think you'll have a great a view of, of, you know, what, my, what I'm teaching, what I'm getting at. And so now if we look from, you know, the top down and we see, okay, the one great spirit, however we want to call it, God, uh, great spirit, the absolute, the one became two. Now the one became two and the and in science they say this was a big bang. There was an, an absolute that all of a sudden exploded forth and creation was created. So when the one became two, then it was the creator and the creation. And we call that the father, which is the heavenly father standing beyond everything in the absolute uh, awareness and the great mother who is the the womb of the universe where all material all objective reality is birthed and so <clears throat> the great mother is the whole natural universe and she includes our physical our emotional our energetic our mental uh, bodies and so we are like a microcosm of the macrocosm so within us we have both heaven and earth we have spirit and form and so the uh, nature part of us is our mind-body. The spirit part of us is the incarnate soul that is witnessing through this mind-body. The mind-body is a vehicle that we are operating through to be in the third dimension. Or actually in many dimensions simultaneously, but to be here on this earth plane, <laughs> having a body, being able to go swim in the ocean, to eat food, to have beautiful physical relationships, and all these fun things that we get to do with it. Um, and so... When the one became two, and then the two became many, and so the father sowed the seeds, which are the souls, into the universe, and the mother uh, created the bodies for each soul. So with you have what we call three bodies. So you have a physical body, you have an energy body, and you have a mental body. So if you've seen the symbol for Om, Om, like the Sanskrit Om, the, the mantra, so that looks like a number three. Uh, if you've ever seen it, it looks like a number three, but it's a little exaggerated with the tails on the end. And so what that number three represents is the three worlds. So I say the, three, uh, the one who is complete, three worlds at their feet. The one who is complete is the soul. Already created in the likeness and image of God, you're a divine being. Now we have the three worlds. So we have a mental world, we have an energetic emotional world, and we have a physical world. And so as we um, grow in our awareness of ourself, we uh, develop skills and understanding of how these different levels and layers work and how to fine tune our mind-body instrument so that the, the beautiful divine music and harmony flows through us. And that's the highest expression of your person, of your character, is when you're uninhibited that the, the best, most beautiful part of you is shining through your eyes, shining through your words, shining through your, your person. Um, and so our mind bodies are an instrument that need to be tuned. So if we had a, a guitar, right, and we had like a master musician, and we give them this guitar and all the, the strings are out of tune, you know, and they go to strum it, even if they know great songs and can usually play good if they strum that guitar it's going to sound horrible to all of us until they get there and they make the little adjustments on each string or you know and then they can play the music and so it's the same way with us there's a a beautiful song that wants to come through you and hafiz uh well, this beautiful poem poet he says i am but a hole in the flute that the christ breath flows through and this was just a divine, you know, a poem uh, uh, and reflecting on the divinity and knowing that each one of us has this higher potential. And the higher potential doesn't take away from you in any way whatsoever. All the things that you love, all the things that are in your heart are included in this higher potential. And, uh, and so sometimes you know we start talking about these things and it gets almost like a little scary like and you know and i don't want i don't want anybody to feel that or turned off uh, by going deep or going spiritual you don't have to agree with everything i say and if you have any questions you can write them down and we can go over it and just maybe dialogue about that too so 
always we we drop some of the highest teachings first and then we drop and then we go into uh, some of the other things so that's the way that it's always done through my lineage and that way we start always out in the highest uh, connection in, in that way and so how beautiful is that we are souls we are a family of souls all of us are brothers and sisters uh, created uh, by great mother father and this really um, is part of our higher identity we all know what's called our lower identity. Our lower identity is based on name and form. In yoga, this is called nama rupa. Nama is name, rupa is form. And so our name and form, you know, our little baby body, manufactured by our mother, uh, our mom and dad both contributed, but of course we, um, you know, in the, in the womb, our little baby body is literally grown and manufactured. And at some point, the soul enters uh, the little baby body and that is our incarnation. I can say that with some level of authority because I've actually experienced coming uh, a memory of coming into my baby body. I was doing sacred heart breathing which is a technique um, I, I hope to share with all of you at some point uh, but it's very powerful. I was doing it for an hour and a half and all of a sudden it was like it w I've skydived like 36 times. I love extreme sports. I'm kind of adrenaline junkie and stuff. And so I, uh, I, the feeling was that of skydiving. It was so much adrenaline, so much joy. It was one of the happiest feelings I ever felt. But literally all of a sudden, I'm just a point of awareness shooting through a wormhole in space. Just like in the, you know, sci-fi stuff, I was literally going through the wormhole and I felt so much adrenaline and so much joy and bliss. And then all of a sudden, boom. I'm in my little baby body, but I'm still in my mother's womb in the water, and I could feel uh, my face, I could feel my hands, and uh, it was the memory of literally coming into this lifetime. And the, the name for that breathing, another name for it is called rebirth breathing, because you're literally working energetically through all these memories and all this stuff, and um, transformational breathing, rebirth breathing, sacred heart breathing. So, um, so anyhow, how amazing is this life, right? We get to come in like that. And uh, so learning about our lower identity and our higher identity, uh, and I'm going to stay on track with that, but the lower identity is basically, so when you're a little baby, uh, you know, your mom is pregnant, your mom and dad choose a name for you, and the, the body was prepared, everything, and we come in and we're given this a name and form. And so from the time we were born until now, we have a history and everything that is accumulated around uh, you know, what we've done, our accomplishments, um, the issues we've had, the, you know, our likes and dislikes, and all of that is a part of our lower identity. And it's beautiful because each one of us is a unique expression, a unique manifestation or expression of consciousness. And each of our characters is uniquely different. We all have our own unique gift sets and um, things like that. So uh, lower doesn't mean uh, anything negative. It's just talking about lower as earthly form or earthly identity. And then our higher identity is the identity of our soul. And so uh, the soul is formless, and yet there are qualities that we can point to that help us to understand our higher nature. <clears throat> and so the higher nature or the, okay, well, let's say our lower identity, we have our physical parents. We all have a, a mom and dad. And in our higher identity, it's really the same way. We have our mother, which is mother nature, mother universe. And the more we really can meditate on that, we start to feel something deeper um, just by attuning our awareness to really commune and connect with nature. And if you sit and you actually are there present with the earth and you're present with the ocean, you're present with you know, the, the surroundings and you go into and you have a mental you know, conversation. You're literally um, in this place of reflection and the earth is alive and the earth responds to our intention uh, and attention. And so when we, um, when we you know, connect and commune this way, we grow a stronger energetic connection. Everyone, even the most unconscious person is connected to the earth. But how sweet does it feel? What is the energy or emotion? What is the feeling quality behind that connection? And um, as we develop the relationship more powerfully, um, we also begin to in 
open up the wisdom of the earth. There's a knowledge, there's wisdom, and things begin to come through to you, like insights, epiphanies, and realizations. Uh, so, <clears throat> so with um, that just being one example, you know, with the earth, but our, our greater mother is Mother Nature, and um, our greater father is the, the, the great spirit that is standing beyond all a name and form, standing beyond all a duality, all of the manifest universe and reality. And so it's very important to understand this as a principle because um, the one who is complete, three worlds at their feet, when we're in duality solely, we become consumed by it. It literally consumes us, and that's like having your head go underwater. No longer are you able to breathe. And when you can swim and you can keep your head above the water, um, then you can breathe and, you know, and what a lot of the analogies that they talk about, the, the saints and Jesus, different people walking on water, um, you know, whether that was a physical feat of psychic ability or, or, you know, higher capacity that they did, a lot of these are analogies for deeper spiritual teachings. And so learning to walk on water is learning how to be in the world but not of it, is learning to source from within, from the higher principle of divinity within you, and yet being here in duality. Because we have something called creating versus reacting. Now, reacting is when you have, based on all of your past experience, you uh, have a what seems to be justified by all of your past experience. Say you were in an abusive relationship or something like that. Um, you know, you have certain wounds, certain guarding and things that are in there. Now you uh, are out of that relationship and a new person comes and they are really sweet and kind, but there's still all the guarding and the reaction. They could say something that, you know, because you're still guarded, you interpret in a different way than it was meant. All of a sudden, you know, it's, your past is contaminating the present and it's not as appropriate as it feels based, because you're justified based on the past. And so... That's just one example, it may mean not even the greatest one, but if you can follow my train of thought, when we stand in presence, you know, the power of now, when you're able to be fully present, you're fully relaxed, your breath is deep, you know, this, you're cultivating yourself in a conscious way, uh, you're able to pull from the infinite source of possibilities. So in any given moment, um, somebody could be rude with you they could be um you know they could uh, there could be a situation where it's a a critical moment instead of going into stress instead of going into fear instead of going into doubt and wasting that energy and getting bent out of shape and getting pulled out of your center if you are mindful you take a deep breath and you're like okay in this moment out of any reaction of any energy that i could pull from the you know, infinite possibilities, what would serve this moment in the highest and best way? Because we're quick to lose our temper, quick to, you know, if somebody's mean to us, we're mean back and it feels justified because we're reflecting or mirroring. But in those moments where things get critical, when you can take a deep breath and you can say to your, in, in that flash of, you know, awareness, oh, self, how, what is the highest way to respond to this moment? Now you're creating. That's a different level than reacting. Now, some of our reactions can be good ones because we have positive conditioning and we have negative conditioning. And so some of our conditioning is great and it's automatic and it's spontaneous. And, you know, we've conditioned ourselves um, through disciplines and through, uh, you know, education and different things to have these really beautiful and good spontaneous responses. And so those are, are wonderful. Um, but there's many times, uh, and I'll, I'll back this up with the fact that 90% of human suffering and human misery on planet Earth is self-induced. And it's mental, emotional uneasiness. Now, whenever we have a mental, emotional response to a situation, to a person, to a thought even, that is based in fear, doubt, or negativity, it creates a contraction which is diminishing our energy and potential in that moment. And so we want the highest outcome. We want to expand. 
We don't want to contract. Contracting is going unconscious and it's, it's a self-sabotage. So in our expansion is our power. And so when we, um, breath work is one of the most powerful ways that you're going to be able to undo some of the negative programming uh, that is accumulated in your conditioning and to uh, reprogram the system, you know, to stay open. And so in moments of uncertainty, we don't default to fear. We don't default to uh, being, you know, ungrounded and, and having shallow, choppy breath in a scattered mind. We default to being very grounded, very present, and we learn to trust a deeper part of ourself. And so we can come from this place of, of love, trust, and positive energy flow. <clears throat> so if we were to look at our uh, energetic anatomy, the lower three energy centers, physical, emotional, mental, um, you know, um, we could, if we were to just encapsulate those with like a bubble, we would say that that is kind of like the lower, the ego bubble. Ego ultimately means identity. So in yoga, there's another word other than ego, which means, uh, it says ahamkara. And ahamkara means more accurately a false sense of ourself. So ego just means identity, but ahamkara means a false identity. So when we assume a false identity, which we do unconsciously, we assume that we're just this human, that we're on our own, that there's not an infinite intelligence supporting us, that, and we do it unconsciously. It's not like you think those thoughts, but by reacting in fear, doubt, and negativity, that's the position or alignment you're assuming. So when you're staying in the power position, and say the perfect love casteth without fear. Some of you have maybe heard that statement. And the perfect love, what is the perfect love? Who is the perfect love? You are in your higher self. So you are the perfect love. This uh, Christos or crest of the wave of consciousness, this is the pinnacle for our divine human expression. So when we want to stand at the crest of the wave, the very peak, this is an expanded state of all the energy rising and moving in the same direction to serve the highest outcome for our life's potential and all life around us. Whenever these sabotage programs arise, which fear, doubt, and negativity are unconscious sabotage programs running in the mind and body that each one of us is to overcome. We're not just supposed to live with fear, doubt, and negativity. Those are part of our, our curriculum as a uh, spiritual being that we are here to overcome. And this work is called the great work. In alchemy, this is the transmutation of the lower into the higher, of the base metal into gold. And those are all just analogies. But we're literally transforming, you know, our being uh, from the fertile soils of duality into a diamond mind that rises up into non-dual personal awareness or spiritual awareness and then allows that higher awareness to shine through as enlightenment, to be filled with the light of God or good, to be filled with the light uh, of your soul or spirit. So the spirit or soul has a true nature. And that true nature, uh, they say that in yoga, the three ingredients of the self are sat, chit, ananda. Sat means like truth or, or being or awareness or witness, sat. So this would be the divine masculine. Chit is the divine feminine, which is consciousness. Consciousness is the whole field of creation, everything we're aware of. Um, so consciousness includes the mind, the emotions, the body, and the whole phenomenal world around us, consciousness. And ananda means bliss. And so in Tantra, it's a union between the sacred masculine and sacred feminine, or between spirit and form, or spirit and nature. And so spirit and nature converge in the heart of man or woman. So the heart is seated as a halfway between the upper three heavenly or spiritual centers and the lower three earthly centers. And the heart um, is represented by what's called a Merkaba. The Merkaba is a um, intertwined, uh, two tetrahedrons. Tetrahedron is like a triangle, but in three in um, three dimensions. So instead of it just being you know two dimensional uh, triangle, it has a backside which is an extra point. So there's you know three points on the bottom, one point on the top. The tetrahedrons are interlocked, 
representing one for masculine, one for feminine, one for heaven, one for earth. <clears throat> and so how do we keep this heart open? The heart is a seat of love, and in, I said is also the seat of our conscience. And so whenever our conscience, you know, knows better than our tricky mind. So our mind, <laughs> the lower mind, can easily trick us and justify all kinds of things. And it does that. I'm guilty just as well as anybody else. And the lower mind can trick us into all kinds of stuff. And it's very justified based on information, based on what others are doing and all this kind of thing. But there's a deeper part of our heart that if we're sensitive to, intuitively, we know what's right and what's wrong. We know what's right for us. And we're not judging others, but it's really more your conscience is about how you're feeling about yourself and your thoughts, your emotions, your actions, and, you know, how you're relating in the time space around you and within. And so the conscience, so that's, a, that's an important point, um, that the heart is the seat of a conscience. But it's also, you know, the heart is a bridge of rainbow light that connects heaven and earth. And as we said before, the perfect love casteth without fear. So whenever we have a fear-based thought, uh, the heart contracts. When we have a love-based thought, the heart expands. You, some of you have heard of heart math. There's a whole institute that can measure the strength of your heart's electromagnetic field. And the heart's potential is to expand 50 times what the normal person is walking around with. That is a strong level of magnetism that um, we can all tap into and we do it for for this great good and so <clears throat> the heart now in chinese medicine is called the emperor so when the heart is happy the whole kingdom is happy your health is good your vitality is good your digestive you sleep good your relationships are good everything in your life flourishes um, and it's the opposite when the heart begins to contract you start losing power Health diminishes, awareness diminishes, you start becoming more reactive, you uh, push away people um, in your life, in your relations, and all those kind of things. And so it's just a downward spiral of the energy. The upward or ascension spiral is the expansion. So we have contraction and expansion. All right. Now, keeping the heart happy, um, you know, and, and being aligned with our true nature that really takes uh, quite a bit of self-awareness. Now, uh, I'm gonna tie this into a Taoist teaching called the Three Dun Tien. I think this is a very simple way to look at how to manage and, and expand your energy. So the Three Dun Tien are the belly, the heart, and the head. These are three areas uh, they refer to as elixir fields, but it's a field of energy. So the lower Dantian is called Jing, J-I-N-G. And this one refers to uh, like your, the amount of stored vitality that you have built up in your body mind right now. And this is kind of like a battery. Your battery can be 100% charged, it could be 10% charged. You know, you'll still operate on 10% charge, but it's not, option, it's not um, optimal. And so, <clears throat> When you get down to critically low energy, then some of your organs and brain and things aren't working at full capacity. So we want to keep our energy strong. And so the Jing energy is correspondent with your libido. It's correspondent with your immune system, with your metabolism, uh, with the amount of, uh, you know, like awareness um, that you are having versus reactivity. Okay, so Jing energy. So the lower belly um, area, pelvic area. Um, and then we move to the heart. So the heart area is called qi, C-H-I. Uh, in different parts of China, they call it qi, which is Q-I. It's the same thing. In yoga, called prana, same thing. Life force, same thing. Okay, so qi, every time we breathe in, we're taking in life force. So our life form lives on life force. We need life force more than we need food, more than we need water. We need our breath. Our breath is the main way that we take in life energy from the universe. Each breath is not just oxygen and exchange for carbon dioxide. Those are the, like what we're taught in school as a physical anatomy. The subtle anatomy of our breath is energetic. So when we breathe, there's an electrical charge in the breath. We're drawing in from this charged field of plasma and that electrical charge literally is going into your body 
and out. With each breath, you're accumulating a charge of energy. If you know like battery charger, there's one called a trickle charger and you plug it onto your battery and just like overnight, it just feeds a little charge at a time until the battery is fully charged. Well, you're trickle charging your battery bank of your system with each breath. We breathe, uh, let's see, what is it? 21,700 times per day. So that's a lot of breathing and most of it is unconscious. Our breath is one of the faculties that we can take over. Like it's, you know, some people learn to regulate their heartbeat or, or do other things, but it's hard to say, all right, all right, now I'm going to digest the food that I just ate. <laughs> you know, your body does it automatically. You don't have to think about it. Just like you don't have to think about beating your heart or breathing or things like that. But the, when you do um, manually override the breath, it gives you access into a deeper part of your uh, nervous system. And that's where you can create these overrides. So if you're having a stressful moment, you can attune to your breath and you can calm the nerves, ground the energy, and reverse the uh, contraction through your breath. So the breath becomes your main, your, your master key. This is your skeleton key to unlock all of the negative charges or contractions that you build up in your body, emotions, and mind. So if you learn to attune to your breath, um, and it's not just normal breathing, it's really learning to relax and stretch open. And it takes time of practice and dedication to develop the awareness and the skill set within your breath to do these things, but it is right there for you. Um, okay, so I'm tying a lot of things together. <clears throat> Let's all take a breath so we can just continue to ride the wave. Right, I'm going to continue talking. You're welcome to take more breaths as we go. So we are the water inside of our body is like a crystal. It's a crystalline structure that carries memory. Um, it's very amazing that the emotions, um, you, your energy is neutral, but whatever type of thought you think it dies or creates a flavor or I'm using that word loosely flavor or color uh, it creates a charge a positive or negative charge within your emotional body and so if we think a bunch of angry thoughts then uh, our emotional body gets flavored or charged with this angry feeling uh, charge of energy and that memory builds up into your um, we could call the subconscious, but we also call it the water in the body is holding that charge. Now, if you're holding a lot of angry charge, then that is a alignment that you've created in your mind body, whether it's conscious or unconscious, doesn't matter. The universe responds to you with that charge. So now you're holding angry charge. So now you go out into the world and the world gives you some more stuff to be angry about because that is the law of attraction <laughs> and that is the magnetism that we're holding. So however we're coloring the waters, our emotional bodies, our waters. Now another cool analogy I came up with the, uh, not too long ago was imagine if your brain is like the container where you put the tea, right? So you have like a, the tea goes in here and it steeps into the waters of your body. So whatever type of thoughts you're thinking is the type of tea that you're saturating into the emotional waters of your body. So we have to think, we have to really choose our thoughts. There's a notion that's unconsciously programmed into all of us that somehow fear, doubt, negativity have some sort of positive uh, outcome or use. That there's somehow those are appropriate responses that are normal for all human beings and that by going into fear, doubt, and negativity, somehow we're going to solve an issue or create a better situation for ourselves. 
which is completely backwards and is a lie. So you're never going to create uh, something, you know, uh, positive uh, out of a negative force. Um, now, there is alchemy, so there is transmutation. And so we, we could go really into that just by itself and get lost in the tangent. But um, just as just briefly touching on this, and if you have questions about it, we can talk about it. But love begets love. Fear begets fear. And so this is when we come to a non-dual understanding that our brain is a quantum computer interfacing with the quantum field of reality and is creating effects in the field on people, places, and things, as well as our own mind-body system. So then we want to get to where the types of thoughts we're thinking uh, create the type of reality that we want to live and experience. And so it doesn't mean that you will never get troubled. Of course, there's things that make you feel angry. We want to have all of those types of emotions more on the surface of our being, whereas the depth of our being is like the garden that we tend to and care for. We pick the weeds and we plant the fruits and vegetables. We make our garden zen and beautiful, not overcrowded. 80% of the average person's thoughts are repetitive, and unresourceful. That means 80% of the thoughts aren't amounting to anything. Doesn't make you more intelligent, doesn't make you more productive. It's just a type of internal noise. And the brain creating this kind of noise burns up a lot of vitality. It keeps us distracted from being more connected to the present moment. So being able to really drop into presence where you're just alert without thinking this is a really uh, beautiful state to be in, to connect with nature, to connect with your loved ones, uh, to commune you know, within the, the deeper and higher parts of yourself, beautiful insights and feelings that arise from those places. And so learning how to quiet your thinking mind, you know, that is a level of self-mastery and self-discipline. Whether you want to call it meditation or something else, it doesn't matter, but it's learning that you can quiet the thinking mind and go beyond the thinking mind. When you're able to do that, um, that is a level of self-mastery that will release tons and tons of suffering from your own personal experience. And we say suffering, it sounds like, okay, you just got hit by a car, you're starving to death, you're you know, on the side of a mountain with no help and you're <laughs> stranded. But suffering is, you know, when you're a divine being, heavenly feeling within you is your natural state. So anything less than that is considered suffering. So, um, you know, so I just want to f create a framework for that just to, to, so it's a little clearer. But we, we have a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of uneasiness all the time. And you want to feel completely at home within yourself, no matter where you are. Not just at home whenever nobody's there and you got special music on. You want to feel totally relaxed and at ease, no matter where you are, no matter who you're around. You'll still sense things. You know, I've been an empath my whole life, and so everywhere I went, I felt everybody's emotions, thoughts. I could sense the energy, and so it was tough for me because, you know, even with my loved ones, I was just always going through whatever everybody else was going through. And in big groups, I could feel all of it. And it was overwhelming. Through my practice, through breath work, through meditation, through yoga, through qigong, through these different disciplines, you don't have to do all of them. You can just pick one. Um, you can start to create more internal space. Internal space allows the deeper, more beautiful part of you to come through. So we, when we, uh, we don't, or we're not taught to value space. We're taught more to value the objects in space. We're taught to value, you know, like if you think of a beautiful song, uh, there has to be space between the notes. Otherwise, the song just sounds like noise. And so if it, in between each note, there's a little bit of space, and this creates melody, and this creates a harmony. Um, so when we have that type of internal space, uh, it allows the, the life to be more harmonious to your, how you feel. You have more awareness to be able to manage your mind, manage your energy, manage your breath, feel your body, uh, be able to tend to your body's needs. 
because when we're sensitive, we know what foods to eat and what ones not to eat. You know, when we're, when we're thinking so much, um, we tend to neglect those feelings. We just kind of override them. We're like, no, I just want this. I wanna... And it's more of like our mind is thinking. The more you think, the less you feel. So you're not as in tune. And so learning to create spaciousness. This is also uh, more in like the esoteric teachings called the return of the sacred feminine. The return of the sacred feminine is space awareness. We're aware of the space within us. We're aware of the space around us, like nature, the environment. We're just, uh, that is a state of receptivity. When the left brain or masculine side of us is more active, we're more assertive with our thoughts. Our thoughts, um, we're thinking of the future, we're thinking of the past, but we're not as present in the moment. We're more goal-oriented and ambitious, but we seem to be more preoccupied internally. And so we want both sides of our brain, both sides masculine and feminine, to be balanced, where we use the mind powerfully, but we can also turn it off. When you turn it off, you sleep better, you connect with your loved ones better, um, you're able to you know, just feel more sense of relaxation. Also, when you create space, you're able to recharge your system. It gives you the downtime to recharge. Because you could have free time, but without space, you don't recharge. You could sit there on the couch, watch TV, you could do other things, but you're, you're not recharging as deeply as you would if you had an, a quietude internally. Um, okay, so let me see. We have so many things that I, I want to share, I want to go into, but I know we have uh, to stay on schedule. So let me just see how we want to proceed. <clears throat> Okay, I wanted to just talk about this, like with our uh, business. So with business, when you just, it's, it's like a baby. And some of you may be mothers and you can relate to this. You know, when you have your baby, uh, and a lot of women go through a postpartum and there's, um, there's a period where you're hyper-focused on your baby and you actually begin to neglect yourself. You neglect your self-care practices, you're not going, we're not working out, you're not sleeping good, you're not, <laughs> a lot of those things. And of course, it's a labor of love. And the same way with your business, you can be so into growing it, developing it, um, that you start putting yourself second. And over time, this will grow into uh, an imbalance and it'll grow into a resent. Uh, resenting it. Even if you're achieving your goals and success in business, if you're not keeping yourself in the same level of care uh, you want to when you get to your goal you want to feel like a million bucks too so you can really um, you know benefit from all of the hard work that you've been doing now we're not taught that many self-care practices and so I'm giving you a, a big download of uh, information that's more in alignment with the esoteric teachings and this is just to inspire you to be, you know, really look at the different levels and layers of your own person and knowing that a body, mind, spiritual discipline um, that you do on a regular basis, a, a daily practice would be ideal, um, that is unwinding your body. So when we stretch, we're actually unwinding the musculature, the fascia, the joints. We're, we're stretching open the body. It stiffens up from travel, from working, from sitting, from pretty much everything. <laughs> the body just seems to tighten up. And so we, we need both uh, strength. You know, we need cardiovascular. We need stretching. These are all part of maintaining the physical body. We have to put in healthy, clean food, water, juices, those kind of things. We cut our bad habits. Um, and taking good care of your physical self. But then, you know, we have the energy and emotional component, which we don't typically even think about as much, but how are you cleansing your energy? Um, and how are you recharging your energy? Okay, so when we wanna cleanse our energy in, in shamanism, in, uh, you know, in meditation, in, in Qigong, there's something called zeroing out. When you zero out, this is when you are able to, um, you know, uh, breathe. When you do the deep breaths, you start to expand your uh, subtle body. This is creating expansion. And then the mind starts to drop away. And when the mind drops away, 
and you're, you've become fully present, open, you've zeroed out your field. The way to zero out your field is to fully relax. You're awake and alert, but you're completely at ease without thoughts. When you can get to that place, you're able to drop everything. So all of the charges that have momentum within your field zero out. This is how you can clean your energy field and recharge. When you're quiet and you open yourself up like that, you're, you deeply recharge and you drop all of the negative charges that have accumulated. Each one of us is collecting or a collective consciousness, so we accumulate charge, positive or negative. So when we can zero out, this is a very healthy thing to do. Um, so we just kind of covered the energetic and the mental um, care and it's it's doing the breathing getting into the state where you've because at some point you're breathing and your mind's like okay I've had enough you want to breathe till you go past that and the mind is just relaxed it's no longer worried about how much time have I been doing this when's it gonna be over you want to breathe to the point where your mind has just let go and now you've zeroed out your field now you can go back to whatever you're doing and you're completely refreshed. Your energy has been able to receive more from the universe. Um, the, so um, another analogy that I want to throw in here is your energy body, you know, which the one who's complete three worlds at their feet. So the three worlds, mental, emotional, physical, we can say if we were to compare our three bodies, our personal atmosphere to like a sea sponge. Right, so a beautiful big sea sponge, like this big sponge. If I were to take the sponge and mash it up in my hand and push it in, you know, real tight, and I've got the whole sponge crumpled down into the palm of my hand, now I take my hand and I dunk it into the ocean. Right, I hold it down there, it doesn't matter, it could be five minutes, and I pull my hand back up. If I open and release my hand, that sponge will still be dry. Right, but if I hold the sponge very loosely and I dunk it into the ocean, even for one second, and I pull it out, that sponge is going to be sopping wet and dripping with, with uh, fluid, which in this case would be energy, for which we compare it to our energy body. So the grip is the grip of fear. When you breathe, when you stretch, when you relax, when you zero out, you're opening the grip that your nervous system has on your mind body. And by opening your grip, you allow the sponge of your personal atmosphere to soak up the ocean of energy that's all around you. Remember, this field of charged plasma, this ocean of energy is all around us. But so many people are depleted of energy because they're constantly in the contracted state. So this is like the most simplified way that I can explain all of the body-mind spiritual disciplines. They are all tools to help you unwind, to help you open up so that you can receive what is abundantly already shared with you from Source. You are a divine being. Everything can be transformed to serve the highest good within you as we learn to trust, as we learn to let go, as we open up back into love. And the most direct and powerful way that I'm imparting is the breathing. With that said, I want to share with you now for the next like 15 minutes or so, we're going to do some breathing techniques to um, you know, go into a deeper experience of the breath work. Now we've done diaphragmatic breathing. And like I said, if there was one takeaway, that's the one I want you to remember and practice on a regular and daily basis. Um, these other two are to open up your awareness to different parts of your lungs and, and how to really isolate with your uh, body breath connection, um, the upper and lower chambers of the lungs. So, excuse me. Um, so we have like, when we breathe in, there, this part is called, uh, this breathing is called four part breathing. I'm going to lower my camera a little bit so you can see kind of like my belly torso, uh, just for an example, okay, like this. So when I do this at the beginning, I like to place one hand on the belly, one hand kind of on the heart like that. Now, as you inhale, breathing in and out through your nose, breathe down into the bottom hand. So you breathe into your belly, you feel your belly expand. So my belly just expanded with my breath. Now part two is breathing into the upper hand, inhale up to your upper chest. Now you're full, two parts. Now the third is empty the belly, squeeze your belly up and in. Fourth is empty the chest. All right, into the belly, into the chest, out of the belly, 
out of the chest. Into the belly, into the chest, out of the belly, out of the chest. In, in, out, out. In, in, out, out. In, expanding the belly. In, expanding the chest. Exhale, contracting the belly. Exhale, contracting the chest. In, in, out, out. In, in, out, out. We're gonna continue, it's normal to feel really hot, like a hot flash, that's part of the energy expansion. In, in, out, out. Keep going, in, in, out, out. It's normal to get a lot of saliva and you swallow it down. It's because you're stimulating the energy flow. The waters in the body start moving. You swallow down, you continue into the belly, into the chest, out of the belly, out of the chest. Now I want you to breathe powerfully. You know, so you're using effort to really stretch, stretch, contract, contract. Sometimes we breathe really light to relax. This one is more stimulating and exercising the different chambers of your uh, lungs. And so inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. Keep going, we're building a wave. This is a wave of pressure that builds up inside of your body. The pressure is expanding and sometimes it pushes against contractions, physical, energetic, and mental. If you feel uneasy doing this, just relax and ride the wave. It'll continue opening up. You might feel tingly, lightheaded, a little uh, like euphoria. You can maybe see I'm already sweating just from a few breaths. This is really uh, powerful. So we're moving energy. We're releasing a lot of trapped heat in the expansion and just activating these two pumps, the belly and the chest. So in, in, out, out. Keep going for a little bit longer. I'll keep coaching you. I, I like to interject a little bit of information along the way, but I want you to stay with the breath. Just moving it all the way in and all the way out. Now inhale to your belly and hold it. So inhale, stretch the belly and hold, just pausing. The belly is just full. Now gather any saliva from the mouth and throat, swallow it down. Inhale a little bigger to your belly. See if you can stretch and fit a little bit more down into that area. Just like PSI, the pressure per square inch, we inflate a tire. You can also inflate a little more into your belly, which creates internal pressurization. The pressure stretches the fascia, the diaphragm, 
uh, the skin, even some of the joints, holding. All right, now inhale up to your chest and hold. So now the belly and chest are full. See if you can even feel like the diaphragm and middle ribs. Inhale a little bigger now to the chest and middle ribs. Now see if you feel underneath your collarbone, your clavicles. Inhale up to your collarbones. Now holding, inhale a little more. Good, hold it. Gather the saliva from your mouth and throat. Swallow the pressure down. Continue to hold just a little longer. Resist the urge to release. And then go ahead, slowly exhale, belly first. Squeezing the belly up and in. And then the chest, empty all the way out. Good, hold it for a moment. Hold it. The hardest one is to hold the exhale. This is called an external breath retention. And then go ahead and take a few breaths. In, in, out, out, nice and gentle. You can go ahead and release your hands down onto your thighs. And, and now just breathing in and out through the nose and down to the belly. So we release the four-part breathing. Now we're back to diaphragmatic breaths. Again, gather any saliva, swallow down. Eyes are still closed, whole body relaxed. Just take a few more breaths and feel, without thoughts, just feel and notice what you're sensing. Feel your spine. Allow the body to adjust so that your spine feels tall, but all of the joints feel soft and relaxed. Even your face and neck are soft and open. No tension anywhere. Okay, taking a nice deep breath. We'll just take a moment to relax. If you'd like to have some water, I'm gonna take care of something. I'll just be one second and we'll continue. Okay, sorry about that. One of my neighbors was knocking and they needed some, some help with me. Uh, they didn't know I had a meeting right now. <laughs> okay, you guys can still hear me? Yeah, we're good? I got it back on? Okay, excellent. It's so amazing because so many things that are physical are also energetic. And as soon as we start moving the energy, you know, all of Chinese medicine is based on removing stagnation from the system and getting everything to balance out. Because all of the organs uh, hold heat and, it, and, and the body, when it's distorted, the meridians and stuff aren't breathing. So that's why acupuncture can work, yoga and things like that work, qi, uh, qigong works. So it's such a beautiful thing to be able to learn to work with your breath. It is seriously stronger than any superfood nutrition that you might you know eat or take um, and this is not something that we're taught there's a lot of value in like yeah, of course you have to breathe or you're going to die but we're not taught to breathe for nourishment to build internal energy to power ourselves and activate the higher potential within the body mind and spirit but it really is one of the master techniques and keys um, you know, in yoga, they say the eight step or eight limb path, asana, stretching is first one, or, or actually a third one. There's yamas and niyamas, which are uh, how to keep your heart and conscience happy. <laughs> and then it goes into the stretch positions to activate the meridians. It goes into then breathing, which pranayama is to build internal energy. That comes before going into meditation, pratyahara and all that. And so uh, the breath is such a missing component. And uh, it's part of my mission to bring it back to the people. This is the wind in our sail, so to speak, energetically. Um, and it will really help so many on so many different levels. So I no, it's a great question, absolutely. And um, yes, I can, I can totally uh, just talk about that for a moment. So the D is dimension. So 3D is third dimension, 4D, fourth dimension, 5th D, fifth dimension. And so typically the dimensions are also correspondent with the chakras. 
So if you were to look at your 3D would be solar plexus and that's where most people in our reality are is mostly in the intellect, in the thinking mind. And so it takes quite a bit of practice to go beyond the thoughts into intuition and into that deeper self-awareness. And so 4D is more of you're attuned to your conscience, you're attuned to your, um, your heart. And so 4D is heart-based consciousness. Um, and, you know, we've seen if you're a heart-based person, you don't understand when somebody can do something so heartless and not feel bad about it. <laughs> you know, you've seen that stuff happen. And that's because they're still in third D or even sometimes lower, maybe like, you know, not even mentally aware. They're, they're in a lower dimensional reality, which is they're mostly emotionally based. And that's kind of a separation where they just feel like nothing really has to do with them except for what they're feeling. And so they're acting out from that place without any sort of empathy for anyone else. Uh, but so anyway, it's different levels of self-awareness. So 5D is also called Christ consciousness because it's being aware of yourself as a divine being. And whether we use that word, because I know there's a lot of probably different um, faiths and uh, religions and backgrounds and things like that. I'm open to uh, all different religions and, and body, mind, spiritual, sacred systems um, without really you know, uh, feeling like I have to belong to anyone specifically. The way my viewpoint is, I see all of them as an expression of the one consciousness. And I think that it's safe for us to cherry pick the best pieces and parts from all of them that help us to live the best life and to have the deepest understanding of ourself and relationship with all things. So 5D is uh, understanding your higher identity, which is what we covered earlier and saying the great mother is the mother nature, natural universe. Great Father is the Heavenly Father. We say heavenly because unmanifest in a higher dimension of, re, uh, or, you know, in the highest dimension, the Great Father is the all-pervading awareness that sees through all eyes and yet is unmanifest. Is here present with us in this very moment um, completely, and yet, you know, we can't point to any specific place and say there. <laughs> and so 5D is living that reality. And so when your consciousness raises to that level, that said living in 5D. And there's even states beyond 5D, but just to wrap that one up. Yes, it is. It's exactly, it's, it's energy. And so as you're breathing, the energy expands and it begins expanding and rising up. So uh, when it contracts, it goes down. When it expands, it goes up. And so the spine we're called the stairway to heaven. This is the center column connecting the unmanifest dimension of spirit to the manifest, which is our, our physical reality. So when we breathe, you know, we are beginning to uh, like open up energetically and expand. And so you'll feel so many incredible sensations as you go into the breathing. Um, I do uh, sometimes these hour and a half uh, breathing sessions, both with individuals and groups called sacred heart breathing. And people have incredible esoteric experiences you know all kinds of healings out of body um, visions all kinds of energy <laughs> energetic experiences so there's so much magic um, right within our breath and and knowing about it doesn't do as much as actually doing the practices and that's the hardest thing is to flip your mode from being in your mind and having a lot of stuff to do to sitting down and say, okay, right now I'm not going to do anything except just focus on my breathing. I'm going to be completely with myself and just do breathing. And even if you're, you have 20, 30 minutes, you set that time to just say, no matter what distractions, what phone calls come, what I think of while I'm breathing, I'm just going to breathe. And if you start doing it like that, you're going to start to see incredible benefits in your life. Yeah, great, great, Emily. Thank you for that. Yes, um, and I'm glad you remember that from my talk. Um, the, you know, when I started doing deep belly breathing, uh, I realized how tense my diaphragm was. I literally was like, it was like a, a locked up fist in my diaphragm and I was a chest breather. And I, I swam competitively, ran track and cross country. I was a chest breather the whole time. I, I can't even imagine if I was learning to breathe how much better I would have done in all my sports and other things. But um, it took me about a year of sitting down on a daily basis and doing at least you know, 20 minutes a day of deep diaphragmatic breathing to, to break the pattern or habit of being a chest breather. 
So, you know, the, the benefit is you have the rest of your life to reap the rewards of your hard labor. And if it takes you a year, two years, you, you're going to feel better the rest of your life and age better and have more vitality for everything you do. When I would sit down, it would take me a couple minutes to get the diaphragm to soften and open. And it was even painful sometimes to breathe into it. Once I got to the point where uh, it would open up, I would sit there and feel so good. I'd get done. I'd be like, oh, this is how I always want to feel. But I'd go and get in the car, drive somewhere, a few minutes, phone call, a little road rage, <laughs> a little whatever, you know, kicks in uh, and everything would lock up. And I'd start, I'd just all of a sudden be like, man, I don't feel that good. And I would check how am I breathing? And sure enough, it would be chest breath. So then I became very cognizant of deep belly breathing. And I just started to practice on a daily basis, whether I was working, whether I was riding in the car, standing in line. I just tried to breathe deep, full belly breaths. And... Um, it, by practicing it daily, it kept that alive in my awareness, and I was able to break through that pattern. And, you know, like I said, if there's one takeaway, that is it. Take all the information, wonderful, but one very tangible, you know, technique is just deep rhythmic breaths. It's going to boost up your whole system on every level, and, you know, the benefits are unbelievable. It's free. It just takes willpower. That was one of the biggest things for me, being an empath, was public speaking and groups and pre business presentations and otherwise. And it was just overwhelming, the amount of information barraging through my awareness. You know, it wasn't, it was just like so much and so intense that it was, uh, it took me time to work through that. But I will share with you, um, my partner, my girlfriend and I, um, we created a video called Are You an Empath? We, it's about an hour and 40 minute uh, um She's a shaman and medicine woman, and so it's her perspective and mine, but we talk and really elaborate. I would definitely share the link with you. I'll send it. Um, but just to touch on that briefly, because it's a lot of information, um, it's learning to create more internal space um, because your ability, I call it root and shield. You want to be able to root into your body and breath, and the shield comes from learning to hold your heart open because whenever we get all of this stimulation, sometimes in that there, we feel so many different things, our reaction can be to contract a little bit. And so um, keeping rooted in your body with your breath, with your awareness, but also you know, keeping the heart expanded, there's like a force field that the heart produces. So um, having this kind of inner space that's your home, that's your place, and you don't let anyone into that place, uh, especially with like the negative energy um, that you sometimes can feel. You, wanna, you can be aware of everything, and one of the key points I made in that talk that I did was it's not your sensitivity that you suffer from, it's your reactivity. All right, so not your sensitivity, but your internal reaction. And it's a high level of mastery to be non-reactive to all, picking up on all of that stuff. But there is a way to do it and developing uh, through breath awareness uh, really helps to neutralize all the charges. Because some of them we collected over our childhood and stuff and we just never got rid of them. They're just a program that's deep in our subconscious that gets triggered when we get overwhelmed. Uh, and so you will... You'll, you'll be able to unwind those programs through the breath work, and then I think you'll gain a ton of value out of that talk that uh, I'll be sending for you. No, no, so you felt like in your, in your chest right here, you felt it get tightened up? Yeah, okay, so part of that is, you know, uh, you're holding some contraction in there, and the energy of the breath wants to expand and open everything. Now, doing a, uh, some yoga practice where you're stretching and opening those areas definitely would help, to prepare you, especially because you have that tension there. But if you continue with the breathing, even though you're going through the pain of it, you'll be surprised like how your, uh, the other lady, your, um, your back pain went away. Your chest would actually open just from the energy after, but it would take a little bit longer. You were probably building the pressure, but after a certain point, it would release and then the energy moves through that area. So it's very powerful. Like when we do the, a lot of the sacred heart breathing, people get aches and pains all over the whole body because that internal pressurization is working on those spaces. So you can stretch to relieve it, but just doing the breathing and relaxing, it will work through. Oh yeah, yeah. And that is very common too. And it doesn't mean that anything was wrong or anything like that. Sometimes 
when you get that receptive, like you said, you, you almost release a certain part of uh, the energy in your mind and nervous system, but it's like you're rebooting, you know, and you're, uh, some new code, some reboots, some different things happen. And energetically, um, if you find that you're get, doing it and you get tired, you can do that into a power nap, into a shavasana. I love doing 20 minutes of breathing right before I go to bed. I sit on the edge of the bed, so I'm sitting up with my feet on the floor. I do the breathing for 20 minutes and then I hit the pillow. And it's amazing at how deep you sleep and you're actually in an expanded space the whole night. So it kind of like unwinding all the tension that winds up through the day. And then you're in this super expansive restful space. And um, that is really, I think, a, a, a super positive thing to do for yourself. So you can use that to your advantage. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I, I, I love the feedback. I, I so appreciate it. You guys inspire me to continue to stay on mission and keep sharing. Um, it, it made me think of right now when you said that I, uh, uh, one of the points that I wanted to um, touch back on was we, we were starting to cover the three Dan Tien. Uh, we talked about Jing. We talked about Qi. And then I think after Qi, we went on a tangent. And so I didn't share with you Shen. So I just wanted to drop that one in there. And so Shen is awareness energy. So awareness, we'll say like the third eye is the light. So the, when thine eyes be single, thy bodies be filled with light. So this light is the light or lamp of awareness. And so awareness, um, just because you have thoughts and uh, I mean, because a person has, you know, is able to talk and communicate and everything, they still may be so um, in their mind that they don't have the, you know, depending on the level of energy they have built up, depends on the level of awareness that they will have and the clarity they have behind their thoughts, what they're creating, how they're affecting things. And so we grow in awareness, we grow in spirit. When your heart is happy and your breath is deep, then you accumulate more chi as jing. When the Jing is strong, that powers the light of awareness within. Um, and so your, when your heart is happy and your breath is deep, you build up this vitality. Vitality is libido. It's uh, what powers like Kundalini. It's what powers your metabolism. It activates your whole system. And so that's the wealth of energy you have accumulation. And so when your heart is happy, breath is deep, you build it up, and then that energy goes up, rises into the third eye. And when you're doing the breathing, as you are feeling the third eye activate, that's because the shen or spirit is being nourished. And that light, as it gets brighter, you can see more. You see uh, with your sixth sense more, and you can see into the higher dimensions. You can know uh, and source from the infinite intelligence. And so um, we're growing in shen. And so Shen ultimately grows into what we see the saints with the big halo around their head. And that's what it represents is that spirit, that light, the lamp of awareness is lit within. And um, the person, you know, when illuminated is illuminated with the light of spirit. And so we call enlightened. Um, so I'll just give you an author's name for the Taoist uh, information on, on Taoist internal alchemy. One of my favorite teachers is Mantak, M-A-N-T-A-K. Chia, C-H-I-A. He has um, a whole system of Taoist healing and different practices. Um, I'm sure if you go on Amazon, you'll see a, a bunch of his books. Um, something on uh, specifically on the Three Dan Tien. Um, you could even type in Three Dan Tien Mantak Chia and, um, and take a look. I have a big library of his work um, and information. There's one called like Awakening the Healing Light Within. I think that one's very good because it has a little bit of everything. Um, it's practices like the inner smile, uh, learning to transform the lower emotions into higher energy, cleaning the organs, um, qigong, and stuff like that. So Mantak Chia, he's awesome um, for the Taoist, the Taoist work. And then Science of Self. Um, like a, a, a really nice short book on the chakras. I liked uh, another author, Michael Merdad. It was called The Seven Spiritual Initiations. That was a really great read and it's, it's a short, fun little book. Um, you could probably blow through it in a day. Well, Science of Self is more of like just a general name for all of the esoteric 
wisdom teachings. And, and in, so it's, you know, um, it would include chakras. Chakras is like energetic anatomy, but it, it also, science of self would include, you know, everything from diet, nutrition, uh, breath work, um, understanding mind, understanding consciousness. So it's really kind of an umbrella term for the whole subject matter uh, of self. So, and ultimately, you know, um, like we break it into internal, external, like the external world and, and internal world. Like I said, exoteric is the science and study of the world around us, esoteric, internal. Um, but ultimately, you know, um, consciousness is just, <laughs> it's everything. It's, and, and how beautiful. You know, starting to study like things that are about non dualism, that, that's a good buzzword um, to kind of circle uh, because non dualism and understanding what that means, you know, that's one of the toughest things for our left brain to try to understand and figure out uh, because mostly we think, you know, in duality and that's how the mind works. Everything is relational. So you say, well, something is uh, hot. Well, how hot was it? I mean, is it hot as the sun or is it a hot cup of coffee? It's in relationship to cold and also our experience. So it's really uh, pretty cool. We, we are kind of in living in a paradox where we have the duality and this physical you know, world in the way that we're functioning. Um, and this is you know, uh, one part of our experience is in duality. But we begin to open into the non-dual reality as well. And they're both living simultaneously um, side by side. And so like when two spheres begin to merge, it creates what's called the Vesica Pisces. Right? You've seen that symbol? Uh, Vesica Pisces. Uh, kind of looks like, uh, let's see. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? I could draw it or maybe I can pull it up. Well, anyway, the Vesca Pisces is happening right at the heart center. And so it's where um, we enter the higher dimension of our self, which is the whole spiritual dimension is non-dual. And so learning how to hold yourself in alignment with principles, that's a level of mastery. The, the lower self is typically conditioned and reactive, but we can retrain the lower self when we're awakened in the higher self. So like in some of the sacred symbology, like even in um, yoga or Hinduism, they'll show Shiva wearing a tiger skin around his waist. And that tiger is comparable to the mind because when the mind gets its claws into something, it doesn't want to let it go. So it's tenacious. So the tenacity of the mind, the mind, you know, being like, oh, it's got something in its grips. It, it, whether good or bad, it just wants to keep chewing on it. <laughs> it's like trying to take the bone away from a dog that's got a bone. And the mind likes to think thoughts like a dog likes to chew bone. So you try to take the bone away and it gets mad at you. When you first sit down to do breath work or meditate, your own mind will try to sabotage your practice. And you have to be aware that that's going to happen every time, even when you're advanced. So what you do is you just persevere. You keep breathing even when the mind's throwing a fit <laughs> and you get to the other side. And that's really what, you know, an experienced meditator or breath worker knows that your own mind wants to keep thinking thoughts. It doesn't want to let go or drop the momentum that it's carrying. But when you keep going and you just go and ignore whatever those things are, you just keep breathing, all of a sudden you get to unwind all of that and you get through to an open space. The lower mind is the solar plexus. The higher mind is the heart. And the divine mind is the throat. So we, when we get quieter inside, we rise up into higher levels of awareness. And we're able to access those places within ourself. <clears throat> you know, feel free to reach out to me. My website is internalartsteacher.com. Uh, I do, you know, consultations. I do um, all kinds of events and things like that. And uh, would love to connect in the future. So... You guys, thank you so much. Have a great day. Okay. Bye-bye.